Please welcome co-founder and CEO, Silver Rail Technologies, Aaron Gowell. Nice. Morning. Um, I might have gotten the best little slot here right between Facebook and Lola, so I know you guys will probably stick around because I'm <laughs> getting bookend by people that are actually going to be more interesting than me. Um, I'm the token train guy. I think every travel conference has to have a token train guy just to keep you guys from being bored by listening to OTAs and hotels and airlines. So I'll talk a little bit about this. Um, I'm also an old school travel hack. And uh, my old co-CEO, Brad Gerstner, and I built a company called National Leisure Group. Uh, Brad was up here yesterday with Dara and, uh, and Rich. And we'd all had a dinner the night before. And it was really great to kind of catch up on all of this. And, I really love the piece that, uh, that Dennis did about the history of travel. It was just excellent. And like Rich said, I also learned a lot about some of my contemporaries from that period of time. And while it's great to spend time reminiscing about the past, it's also important that we think about the future. And I spend a lot of time thinking about uh, the, the future of travel and in particular at the local level where it touches rail. And I think part of this you, you guys might actually find interesting. So um, <clears throat> this starts for me with, I'll tell you a story. About uh, a year ago, I got invited by the inventor of the internet and former Vice President Al Gore <laughs> to, um, to come to a conference about the future of mobility. And the whole conference was 30 people handpicked to come talk about where mobility was going. And so, the, the conference is the CEOs from Tesla and Uber and Blah Blah Car and Google's ride sharing crew, BMW's ride sharing, or sorry, self driving people, um, a couple of uh, uh, electronic electric bus operators, things like that. So, and there were five ministers of transportation that were also there for five of the fastest growing mega cities in the world. So it was uh, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Jakarta, Singapore, and London. And I thought, well, that's interesting. You've got all these tech people, and then you've got these ministers. I wonder where this conversation's going to go. And so the whole conversation was basically about Uber and self-driving cars. And I'm thinking, oh, man, nobody wants to talk about trains. And, um, <laughs> and so, so and they asked me to give one of the five talks of the, the, of the keynote speech section, or just really doing deep dives on case studies. And I'm going, all right, well, and we do the little train thing, and I talk about how you know, rail is 90% cleaner than air travel, 70% more than combustion car, a train carries three times the number of people as a plane does downtown to downtown. And by the way, last year there was two times the amount of capital invested in high-speed rail than there was the entire commercial air industry. And those are sort of pretty interesting stats. But everybody really wants to talk about the car guys, right? And so we get done with this little thing. And the Minister of Transportation for Rio uh, stands up, and, and this was really interesting. He says, look, this whole day has been really fascinating, um, really interesting to hear about what the car guys are doing and everything. But let me explain the problem that a city has to you. A city is real estate, and there are only three things you can use a city for. It's a road, it's a home, or it's a business, and that's it. And we have a real estate problem. So I don't care if it drives itself or if it's electric or you share it, I'm going to kill it. And he says, <laughs> and, and, and you see all these other ministers of transportation nodding, and you start to realize they actually don't see the self-driving car as some panacea in a city that's got 11 million people. They want, that, they want their real estate back. They want that thing gone. And the guy says to me, he stands up, he goes, Aaron, what Aaron's working on, that's actually a solution for a big city like mine. So then I didn't feel like quite such the fool being at this whole thing, and it worked out pretty well. But it got me really thinking about where the world's going, and what does this mean at the city level? And I've really become quite fascinated with this problem personally over the last year. And so I want to share a little bit of what I've learned about these big megacities and how they're thinking about this. Um, so if we can do a little click. This is a younger, hipper Aaron. A lot skinnier, too, by the way. Um, and Aaron lives in Hampstead. This is where I live. I had a conference that I was going to down in Brighton. This was two weeks ago. This is a real trip that I did. So I wake up in the morning. I know I got to get there. 
uh, I pull out my app, right? First thing I do from my couch, I check Google. Google says take the train. I go on to train line. I book a ticket on train line. This is in London where I live. Um, I then you pull out City Mapper. Anybody use City Mapper? One of my favorite tools, especially in London. It's awesome. Um, City Mapper says, look, best way to get there is in a car. I pull out Uber. I book my Uber. I get down. I haven't even left the couch, and I've pulled out five, uh, four apps, right? So then I cruise on down to Victoria Station. I pull out my train line app. Uh, I get on my train. I do my cruise down to Brighton. I pull back out Google Maps and Uber, and, and that's how I got to the final destination of where I was going. And I used five apps at least seven different times. And I probably pulled out Google Maps a couple of times during the trip just to figure how far I was from where I was ultimately going. And that's the world we live in, right? And we don't think anything of pulling out five apps. But these cities, they're really getting much more complicated. So let me back up a step and talk about rail for a minute and then how we got into this. So basically, rail's one of the last big markets, $300 billion market, pretty close to the size of the air markets and hotel markets, yet no OTA in the world's ever sold a rail ticket. I think that's a pretty interesting problem, and that's the core of why we got into this. Um, chapter one of the travel space, in my mind, is about wiring up the big products to the web, right? That's what Amadeus, Saber, ITA, as technology companies, enabled the retailers like Priceline, Expedia, and all these guys to actually go out and hawk this stuff, right? But pretty straightforward, really, all we did, we hooked up the big products to the internet. What I see is chapter two is really about what's happening at this local level. Uber, Halo, Blah Blah Car, Trainline, all of these apps that are really on-demand apps, day of products that people are using every single day, as opposed to the product that you interact with three or four times a year, which would be Expedia and Priceline, generally speaking. So, Rail's an interesting one because we sit in the middle of this. We're not only a leisure product, but this is a commuter product as well. And that's what I started to get interested in. Yeah, great, so we'll hook up the internet um, and make it so that you can buy this stuff everywhere. And I think we will have done a good job at that. But I'm also fascinated by this local problem. So step one for us as a business is we basically took this very fragmented market and normalized all the data in the rail market. And this will be the 60 seconds on what Silver Rail actually does. It's a hardcore engineering tech business, 250 people, 80% of them engineers, lots of them with PhDs. We actually patent search algorithms around multimodal journey planning. We power a bunch of cities for multimodal journey planning. We normalized all the data in the rail space, exactly like the airline industry did uh, with IATA and ARC. We actually built the settlement processes. So it was really kind of hardcore stuff underneath, and I call it the Rosetta Stone. It's the thing that interprets all of this rail, normalizes the data, and makes it so that people like an Expedia or a Concur can actually book this stuff. And then the more interesting thing for me personally of late is that many of the rail carriers are actually adopting this because they view themselves as a competitor to Expedia on their own websites, and they also want good retailing technology. So we're starting to make big inroads there. So, and Dara mentioned this. First OTA in the world to actually sell rail in an integrated fashion. This went live just last Wednesday. Uh, this is Expedia selling rail for the very first time. And we're really proud of this because if people are going to go to Italy, you know, rail's a perfect product for a place like Italy. And they're moving a lot of people, but those people don't have access to the content on how to plan those trips, package them. So this starts with them just selling the rail tickets, UK first, then they roll out in, I think, uh, US Amtrak. Um, Deutsche Bahn in Germany, and then Italy, and those four will go live over the next couple of months once we're all sure that we have worked out all the kinks. And then they'll load it into their packaging system, so you'll be able to bundle, and then it will be in the air search path, and it'll be right there with air as you're going back and forth, and that's pretty cool. I think we will have good, done a good job for people if we can make that really work. And then secondly, companies like uh, Swedish Rail, we power all of the e-commerce in Sweden, the websites, the mobile apps, and this one's interesting. 90% of the tickets that uh, we issue in Sweden actually are delivered on a mobile phone. I think it's the highest online mobile rate of any travel category out there, which really speaks to this product being a day of product. You know, we want to just buy a ticket and be able to use it. Um, not a big pre-planned product, uh, but we're doing a lot, of, a lot of transactions here. All the transactions, all the search are powered by us. Um, and so that's the guts of what we did as a business. And let's see if we can get it to click. And so, okay, back to this story uh, about what I think is happening at a macro level. Every good story has a bad guy. The bad guy in this story is complexity. Uh, and 
really what's happening at the city level. In 1980, there were four megacities around the world. These are cities with more than 10, 10 million people. 30 years later, there are 25 megacities around the world. In the next 10 years, there will be over 30 megacities and 70% of the world's population is gonna live in a city with more than 10 million people. That's the prediction. Now think about that. That means these cities are getting denser and denser and more and more complex. How are we going to deal with that as a, as a society? So I'll focus on London for a minute. Uh, where I live, there's this 11 million people that are living in London, and this is a wickedly complex city, right? So there are a million people every single day that commute into London. All of them are using different kind of apps to get around the city. In fact, actually, the two biggest infrastructure investments in the city are rail, a uh, big line running north-south and another one running east-west. East, east and I see this as sort of the, the, this is what we're all dealing with at this local level. But here's the problem, generally speaking, with uh, all of these cities and all of these apps. You have great planning apps, Google Maps, City Mapper, Move It, Rome to Rio, bunch of stuff, lots of people doing stuff in this space. That's fabulous, love it, really good products. And then there are great single mode booking apps like Uber, like Halo, like Blah Blah Car, which are essentially little walled gardens, but they cannot plan across the entire trip and they cannot transact across the entire trip. No one's figured out how to make this seem, thing seamless. And Aaron, who's a travel expert, is still pulling out uh, his travel app here and needing to use multiple apps. So I have been thinking a lot about like, how can we make this go away? Now we build multimodal search engines. We build a, basically a packaging transaction platform. We actually package uh, taxis and bus and stuff up in Sweden, which is pretty cool. Um, so I've been working on an idea of like, can we actually make all of this noise go away and eliminate the friction? So we had been testing out an app called Ninja that allows you to seamlessly go across all of these modes. Now this isn't so much about this particular app, but I'm making a point about these big megacities. This particular app in beta testing is being used on average by the group 2.6 times per day. Now that makes it the most frequently used travel app that's ever been built. That's pretty interesting. Now that's not about this business or this particular app, but that's to say this is the pain, the need that people see. And if you can create real utility, it will get real usage. This is the problem that we as megacities are dealing with. And if you look at London, which has sort of a weird picture here, um, on the uh, App Store, there are over 200 apps in the different categories, taxis, bus, train, whatever. There are lots and lots and lots of apps. <laughs> And I think our biggest challenge as a society, as a group of people, as a group of entrepreneurs, is to think about this city problem. I think the problem's only going to get more complex. I think these very first apps that we're seeing are nothing but the first responders. I think the innovation that's gonna happen at the city level is going to be phenomenal. Um, we're going to see a massive amounts of capital invested in solving these kind of complexity problems. And if we do this, and if this happens, uh, we all, this innovation will make people's lives better for what I see as the most important phase of travel, which is phase two, chapter two, what's happening at the megacities. And so hopefully it will spark some thought and, and we will see a lot more innovation coming out of this space. And that's it. Thanks. <laughs>